What's up guys, so today we teamed up with the folks over at Epic Light Media because we wanted to see if you can tell the difference between 12K, 8K, and 6K. So of course we're gonna be using the brand new Ursa 12K and we're gonna be comparing it to the Canon EOS R5 in 8K RAW and we're also gonna be comparing it to the Canon C500 Mark II. Now because we wanna upload this in the highest resolution possible and unfortunately YouTube only supports up to 8K as of filming this video, the Ursa 12K is technically gonna be at an advantage because we're taking that 12K and we're down sampling it to 8K as opposed to the C500 Mark II which we're gonna be upscaling that 6K footage. So we traveled to Arizona to meet up with Thomas and James from Epic Light Media, but I do want to give a huge shout out to Holiday Rental for not only letting us film in one of their incredible vacation homes, but also letting us stay a few nights there. Guys, if you're ever in the Scottsdale, Arizona area, or if you're looking to travel there, check them out. They have beautiful luxury vacation homes with gorgeous views. I'll leave a link down below to their website, so make sure to check them out. Now, before we show you the footage, I do wanna explain how we conducted these tests. Because the Ursa 12K is a super 35 millimeter sensor, and the R5 and C500 Mark II are full frame, we did have to move the tripod a bit closer to our subject to match the field of view of the Ursa. 12K because we did want to use the same lens just to keep it as close and fair as possible. Just note that the field of view might be a little bit different because we had to do that. So we use the same settings on all cameras, white balance, ISO, aperture, and including shooting in RAW with the exception of the R5 that records in 4K HQ, which is not RAW. Now, the Ursa 12K does have different compression ratios in RAW. It varies from 18 to one all the way to Q0. Now the folks over at Epic Light Media did some tests in 12K RAW and noticed that there was really no difference in shooting from 18 to one to Q0. So we ended up just filming everything 12 to one compression ratio. Now finally, in regards to post-processing, because the folks over at Epic Light Media already own an Ursa G2 as a production camera, I let them do all of the coloring for the Ursa 12K. Now I also know that they have been in communication with Blackmagic, so they've been getting tips on best practices on how to properly color grade the Ursa 12K footage. And one thing we've noticed is that the Ursa 12K in RAW is typically very noisy. So what they did is apply denoise and also a bit of sharpening. Now, this is something I did not do with any of the Canon footage. I basically just downloaded the Rec. 709 conversion LED and I applied it and I tried to match it as best as possible, white balance exposure to the Ursa 12K and that was pretty much it. Okay, so with that out of the way, let me explain the format of the video. So what we're gonna do first is play the first test and then we'll discuss it, then we'll play the second test and then we'll talk about it and et cetera, et cetera. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So the first thing we notice is they both look very similar in this 8K sequence, even though technically the C500 Mark II is being upscaled from 6K to 8K, whereas the Ursa 12K is being downsampled to 8K. Now when we punch in, this is where things start to look a little different. The Ursa 12K technically does look sharper, but I would say the C500 Mark II definitely holds its own. Considering there is no sharpening added to the C500 Mark II, also we are zoomed in 400% to match the resolution deficit compared to the 200% of the Ursa 12K. Now for this test, we ended up changing our aperture to T2.8 because on the very first test, we were at T1.3, which means any slight movement from our talent can hinder the results. And what's interesting is there were significant differences. One of the things that I noticed right off the bat is on the Ursa 12K, on Sal's t-shirt, there was a lot of moire, which actually bothered me. Whereas opposed to on the C500 Mark II, it was very smooth. Now when we punch in, we also noticed that on T2.8, 
2.8. The C500 Mark II is equally as sharp as the Ursa 12K. In fact, I almost would bet that it's slightly sharper. Now keep in mind, we didn't add any sharpening on the C500 Mark II and also we are zoomed in 400% to match the Ursa 12K. So for this next example, we're gonna do a blind test. I'm gonna show you footage from camera A, and then I'm gonna show you footage from camera B. I want you guys to let me know which one you think camera A is and which one you think camera B is. Also, let me know which one you like better in the comments down below. If you guessed camera A was the C500 Mark II, Pat yourself in the back because that is correct. The Ursa 12K was camera B. Now, honestly, I would not be upset with either of these cameras. They both look great. However, the Moray still bothers me on the Ursa 12K, and I think that's a problem. So we're done with the Canon C500 Mark II. Now let's go ahead and see how the Ursa 12K compares to the Canon EOS R5 in 8K RAW. So like the C500 Mark II, the R5 punches way above its weight class and the 8K RAW looks just as good as the Ursa 12K, even though technically the 12K is still being downsampled to 8K. But there are three problems that we notice with this footage. The first one is on the Ursa 12K and that's the highlight roll off. We notice that the R5 actually performs much better. If you notice on her lips, her cheeks, and also on her forehead, the R5 just looks smoother and more natural. Something else that we noticed on the Ursa 12K is that on her hair and also her skin tones had this weird yellow coloration. And just so you guys know, we had controlled lighting both on the R5 and also the Ursa 12K. We don't quite understand why this was present. And of course, you could argue, well, Armando, we can fix it in post. But that's not the point because on the R5, all we did is add that conversion LUT and it looked perfectly fine. Now the R5 isn't perfect and when we zoom in three times, we notice that there's this weird green color fringe on her earrings. I don't know why that's happening, but it's very distracting. So we lowered the resolution on the Ursa to 8K to match the EOS R5, just to be on a level playing field. And like the last test, we had very similar results. However, I will say the 8K coming from the EOS R5 was significantly sharper than the 8K coming from the Ursa. So this is where we start to see a drastic difference when comparing the 4K recordings on both of these cameras. I don't think I need to say it, but the 4K HQ mode in the R5 just looks much better than the 4K on the Ursa. In fact, when we punch in, you can see this weird blotchiness, or as I like to call it, the Minecraft effect, and it just looks terrible. We have gone back and forth with Armando for weeks about how when you record 4K on the 12K camera, the image looks blocky. However, we found a solution to the problem. First, let me explain that we have been shooting in 12 to one compression on the Ursa 4.6K G2 and have loved it. We assumed that a 12 to one compression ratio would be nice when shooting in 4K on the 12K as well. And it was in that ratio that we conducted almost all of our previous tests, but we were wrong to do so. What you are seeing here is 18 to one in 4K on the 12K and the image looks blocky. Same with 12 to one and eight to one. It's not only until you shoot in five to one compression that the blocky pattern completely goes away. Basically, you have to shoot in five to one or lower when shooting in 4K on this camera. Don't make the mistake of shooting in a higher compression ratio like we did when shooting in 4K. If you are shooting in 8K or 12K though, the higher compression ratios look great. We have contacted Blackmagic about this 4K compression issue, and they have told us that they are working on a fix for this in a future update. So for the remainder of these tests, rather than me push my opinion on you, I'm gonna let you judge the footage for yourself and then leave a comment on what you find. And then at the end of this, I'm gonna let the folks over from Epic Light media chime in so that they can tell us what their opinion is on the overall test.
Armando has asked us to give our honest opinion on the Ursa 12K. This camera has a gorgeous look. It looks so filmic and cinematic. The image is reminiscent of the Alexa, which we love. We love the slow motion options. There's so much to love about this camera. The 12K is super, super sharp. There is so much detail that could never be appreciated on any monitor. Now here's the problems. The moray is still an issue in fine patterns or textures. We've purchased third-party OLPF filters that have removed this problem for us on our other Blackmagic cameras. However, an OLPF filter for the 12K is still in development by a third-party company. Also, the camera in all compression ratios and resolutions has noise. Unfortunately, the noise is more prominent on this camera than any other Blackmagic camera we own. If I was walking out on a shoot right now, I would pick up the 4.6K. The lower priced Blackmagic cameras are so good and the 12K image just isn't that much better. Now, we loved hanging out with Armando and comparing the Blackmagic 12K to the Canon C500 Mark II and the R5. We've seen the footage and frankly, we're blown away. Both of these Canon cameras looked every bit as sharp and detailed as the 12K. And not only did they look sharp, but there was no clear winner in terms of dynamic range or color or skin tones. The fact that Canon has delivered this kind of image quality in such innovative camera bodies that offer IBIS and autofocus is incredible. And the R5 in particular is to me the most incredible of the bunch. The 4K and 8K image from the R5 is pleasing to look at and incredibly sharp, and the R5 is perfect for so many different kinds of filmmakers. That being said, Armando gave us some of the R5 test footage to play with. Canon Cinema Raw Lite is not an edit-friendly format. On the other hand, B-Raw is fantastic to work with. Even while editing the 12K footage, we got real-time playback with effects applied, and our iMac Pro computers handled the footage beautifully. Now, about the C500 Mark II, let me just say that I really want one. The image coming out of that thing is every bit as good or even better than the 12K. And the functionality of that camera is almost unbelievable as someone coming from Blackmagic. Um, it's clear that Blackmagic and Canon are really going for different markets with these cameras though. All three of these cameras to me represent different shooting styles and different filmmakers. Okay, here's our final thoughts about the 12K. As of right now, we like it. We expect this camera to get even better over time as Blackmagic pushes out firmware updates and develops this technology and sensor even further. However, at twice the cost of the G2 and five times the cost of the Pocket 6K, is it a huge leap forward in terms of image quality? No. Are we going to keep this camera? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Be sure to check out the boys over at Epic Light Media. They're gonna have way more content on the Ursa 12K. I'll leave a link down below to their channel, but just do me a favor, do not, and I mean do not subscribe to their YouTube channel. Now seriously, like I had a conversation with them and they do not like people subscribing to them, so don't do it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, let me know in the comments section down below. My name is Armando, thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.